But the weird part about the transition of letting go of some of these things from habits to mindsets to tools to all the things is that a lot of times they work. You and I, I remember a conversation that at some level, when we started to unpack a different way to approach life, love, business, the whole thing, it was kind of like, this has made me be successful, right? Mm. Like my, my spite, my anger, my fill in the blank for everybody has got me to where I am. It's protected me. It's compartmentalized the world. It's made me successful. Like oftentimes why I want to keep doing the things is because they worked until they don't. Welcome to Rethink Real Estate. My name is Ben Brady, and this is a real estate podcast aimed to deliver sales strategies, marketing tips, and business insights from industry experts and myself to build a listing-focused business for the future. Let's get into it. Okay, folks, welcome back to another episode of Rethink Real Estate. I have to admit I'm incredibly nervous to do this episode, Julia. So, so just so that everybody knows, if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening, okay, is that our guest today is Julia Gentry. Now, first things first is that I asked Julia, do we, do we say Julia from the Dream Factory? Because that is her company. Um, or do I say, like, wh- how do I intro you? And she's like, well, I've got the website, thejuliagentry.com. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I need you know to what? get... Well, I'm bringing my boxing gloves today. So if that's where you want to start, Oh, let's that's go. great. I need to get myself at thebenbrady.com. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but you know better than anybody else that my ego doesn't need any nurturing. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. We'll get there. It's we have on. we have 45 minutes that I'm not sure if you're in the hot seat or if I'm in the hot seat. That's a good point. Um, but um, just so everybody's got a little bit of context, who you are and why I am nervous is typically when I'm face to face with you over a computer screen is that, or even face to face in person, we're usually talking about deeply my emotions, my mental control, my awareness, my, all of these different things that is so foreign to the concept of scripts and dialogues of real estate and the skill set of real estate and leaning into that discomfort is, uh, is certainly one thing that, you know, good doing it on a more public forum is uh <laughs> is confronting so for for those that uh, don't know julia julia's got a fascinating story that i'll allow her to share shortly because i think that it adds um definitely some flavor to who she is and why she's part of the rethink real estate team and harcourt's auctions and harcourt's is a greater network as well is that julia is going to become somebody that's more frequent on our podcast because she identifies a a very clear mindset side of the business that I think is neglected to another scale um, in the real estate industry, as those can see her that are watching and nodding on the screen, Julia wholeheartedly agrees with that. (laughs) I do. I do, which I'm honored. I'm honored to be a part of this conversation. And I think you're right. I think it's so necessary um, to be talking about all the things we're going to be talking about. Yeah. I I think it's the missing link in between, like, I think it's the missing link between doing real estate and feeling fulfilled doing real estate. I agree. I agree. And I think, you know, you and I, one of our claim to fame quotes that I think was the hook, line and sinker was when I told you, Tony Robbins says that success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And I think that that is a misnomer right at the gate in real estate, because whether you do real estate investing or you do real estate from an agent perspective or a broker or manager, it doesn't matter what it is. We get into real estate generally because we want to make money, (laughs) right? Like that's the main draw is we can make money. We can, we can rock our own time. We can be our own boss. We can do all of those things. And for a, a decent percentage of people, they could even check that box, right? Actually, it's actually probably not as high as we would think, but a decent amount of people actually can check the box and say, I've been successful. But then there's that huge gaping hole of fulfillment that follows quickly after. And that's so much around what obviously you and I can chat more about. But well, I want to, I, I do, again, I'm going to, I'm horrible at keeping to agendas. So, um, so I want to dive into that at the moment because, you know, I had a conversation with somebody the other day that I felt incredibly arrogant about. And, and what I mean by that is that, you know, they're talking to me about their financial situation and that, you know, their financial situation is one of the things that, you know, they wish they could improve and they, and they think that that is like, oh no, well, if I just made more money, everything would go away and all that type of stuff. And again, this is going to sound arrogant, but you know, you and I have made significant money in our lifetime and, and, and I, I, I can, I can sit there and I can say to them is that money only actually really makes you feel emptier. Um, if there is a gaping hole in, in, in the highest degree, but but Julia, the thing that I, I said to them in following up with that, and I want to see your opinion of this, 
And then we'll get into the intros and stuff again. Like, I think this is good. Just straight into it. This is fantastic. Deep end. Jump <laughs> deep, in the deep, deep end. Deep. <laughs> Josh would be panicking right Josh, now. Josh. <laughs> tell Josh I'm coming for him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the thing that I sat there and I said is that, and I th- and I literally came up with this thought as I was saying it, the words come out of my mouth that, you know, money only exacerbates the problems and blah, 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 and it'll create new problems. I'm like, you are a piece of shit for saying that to this person because they've never experienced the money that you've ever experienced. And sometimes people have to go through the money side of it to realize that it isn't, it, it isn't everything. You know, how is it that somebody that is sitting there going, oh, basically, fuck you. Like, I, I think money will solve all of my problems. How do you get through to them when they probably have to go through and experience it? And maybe they never will. And they're constantly going to chase that. Yeah, I think that there's a couple of thoughts, right? Right out of the gate, we'll say this. I've had a lot of money and I've had no money. And let me be very honest, I would rather have money. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not suggesting my in my next answer that money isn't nice to have. But here's what I learned through all my ups and downs of having money, not having money, being in debt, like all the things, is that there's a difference between money being a resource and money being your source. And when we start to realize that that freedom actually isn't from more money, freedom is a state of mind, right? And so in theory, all money is, is it creates some freedom for choice. But the problem with that is that if I'm now depending on money to be successful or be fulfilled or to be free, then in theory, I will never have enough of it because that's not what money is supposed to do. Mm. So I'm clinging to money to give me something it wasn't designed to give me. Now, Research has shown that money can make you happier up until about $120,000 a year. So the person today that's listening going, I make 70 grand. And if I made 110, I guarantee you I would be more happy. I would honestly go, yeah, true. Like I've been there, right? Anyone who makes 70 and then makes 110 or 120, you're like happier. (laughs) You know, like I feel happier, right? But over $120,000 a year, that happier scale doesn't go up, nor is it sustainable. Because what happens is that they, they've they actually start to find that now you're tapping into that hole called significance and fulfillment and purpose and meaning that no additional car amount of money trip can give you. In mm. a moment, maybe. I buy a car, I'm happy for a day or a month, but then there I am again, right? With that pit asking Is there something more? Why do I not feel happier? Should I buy more? Should I do more? And then I start to actually just think that more of this is going to make me happier. But what we have to realize is that's a deficiency need. It's not a growth need. So when I hit my baseline, whatever that may be, average $120,000 a year, I'm not going to be more fulfilled. Yeah. Well, how do you convince somebody that's sitting on the other end of you going, maybe they're at that 120 mark and they think that even more money, like throwing more at the wall will stick and, and it will make them happier. But they they just don't believe you, Julia. Like I didn't, on the person that I'm referring to sitting across the Zoom screen and that I know pretty well, they just didn't believe me. They're like, you are so full of it. It's not funny. Yeah. I think that it, we learn one of two ways. We truly learn success leaves clues. So we either learn from people that we're going to honor and respect, or we learn from our own mistakes and, and triumph, right? Yeah. So I think at some level, that's where you and I would go, mm, not mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's the success clue. I'm going to tell you something that later, you know what, you might put in your back pocket and use in 10 years, or mm. when you quote unquote, hit that success metric, great. Right? You put that in your back pocket. You could learn that now, or you could learn the lesson once you get there. Yeah. So guys, as you can see in referring now to Julia is that we've dived deep into something in a topic that that uh, that automatically is just associated with real estate through and through. Certainly one of the topics that Julia and I have spoken about for me personally, but you can see that Julia is our our growth coach. You know, I, like I think that it's important to understand the title of a growth coach is that the growth coach, regardless of whether you call it, and again, I'm going to use words that you probably won't like, Julia, but you know, mentor um, you know, a therapist, um, you know, all of those different things, growth coach and the title that Julia gives herself allowed me and my ego when I first heard of this to actually engage. I loved the idea of the word growth coach and I engaged with it because if somebody said to me, it was like something like a, a mindset coach or something along those lines, I would have turned around and gone, I don't need that. I've got a strong enough mindset. I'm fine. But when it came down to growth, that word growth, that really, that really spoke to me, but it just shows that I was in a place where I couldn't have, I might not have even paid attention to what I heard from Julia if she had a different title. 
and that that that's a whole nother can of worms. We'll leave that alone for the time being. But that really speaks to the work that Julia does with, um, you know, our network of people, um, you know, the top performers within many many different networks, but also not only in real estate, in many many different fields as well. It just so happens to be that she has an affiliation with real estate that's deeper than some of the other avenues because, you know, uh, I think that, you know, you've got a real estate background, Julia, which allows you to speak to that. Um, and again, that's why I believe that, and I'm I'm really excited to have Julia on some frequent episodes of the podcast to dive in deeply to the mindset element of the business versus the skill set element. I know we've already touched on this, but to a touch on it again, guys, is that, you know, it really hit home for me that when I was in real estate, that I got to a certain capacity of skill set that, you know, there really isn't much more, you know, every situation that's coming your way. And if anybody says to you, every situation is different, they're full of it. They, it's actually not true. You actually know how to handle every individual moment, every individual conversation, every individual, you know, situ- situation and negotiation and all of that different side of things to do a deal. But there was something that was missing and in order to take the business to another level when I moved out of the just transactional element of the business to growing the business to being the CEO to doing all of those strategic elements I needed something deeper and I needed deeper purpose I needed deeper fulfillment I needed to know why I was actually doing and everyone always talks about the why but it is a difficult and mucky and awful and prickly and terrible situation to go through. And we're going to shed some more light on that today. But Julia, I wanted to start off with you giving a bit of an introduction to how you've gotten yourself to where you are at the moment. So people have a bit of context to who you are and how you've gotten yourself to your position of what you, of the work that you're doing. Um, Because your journey is something that I find um, not only entertaining with the, uh, with the, with the five kids that you have now, um, but, uh, but also the, the tumbles and turns that is, it's taken over the years. Sorry to interrupt your podcast, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware of the Harcourt's Auction business plan that is available to you as a free value add to your business. We released it earlier this year and have had an overwhelming number of people download it, but also an overwhelming amount of feedback that when they put it into action, it's changed the way that they've thought about their business, not only from a numbers perspective, but also as an inward lead flow to make sure that they're building a repeat and referral business for the future. The main goal of what we're trying to plan for is to remove you from cold prospecting into that repeat and referral natured business that everybody wants. Again, it is available to you on the 16th of January was the episode that you can go back and listen to on podcast or go back and watch through YouTube. But also, if you need to, go to harcourtsauctions.com, click the menu tab, go into the blogs and resources section, and you'll be able to find it under the Harcourts Auctions business plan. Also, you can send me an email, ben.brady at harcourtsauctions.com, and I'd be happy to send it through to you. So I'm glad that you said uh, that I'm not a life coach because I'm a growth coach, right? And I think that anyone who tries to say that they're a life coach, just be wary, right? Because at some level, like you, or maybe pay them double because someone who could tell you exactly how to do life is worth paying everything to, right? Just to to be clear, like, I just want to make sure that this is for the record is that if you had life coach in your title, I wouldn't have come back. Like, I'm... I'm, (laughs) I wouldn't have engaged. I wouldn't have done anything. That's how insecure and egotistical I was at the time. And I probably still am, but whatever. I, I want you to know that I would not engage with myself if that was my title. So just to put that out there what as well. Tony, what does Tony Robbins call himself? He, does he He's call nothing. himself? No. The bro, the bro doesn't need a title at this point in time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, someday I won't need a title as well. Here's the point. <laughs> well, you the don't. Idea- hang on, hang on. You don't. You've got the Julia the Gentry. The Julia Gentry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be very frank the Julia Gentry. So any other Julia Gentry's out there does does not even close. (laughs) Now, the idea for me though, why I love, because I'm like you, I'm fascinated by growth. And the reason that I'm fascinated by growth is ultimately kind of what got me to where I am today is that I think all of us would raise our hands and say, I want to grow in any area, right? Like I want to grow, I want to be better in my marriage. I want to be better financially. I want to be better at business. Like all of us would say that we want to grow. And then yet very few of us actually want to do what it takes to grow. So those hands go back down. And the reason why is because it's hard. It's really hard, right? Which we talk a lot about in my book of pick your hard. But I think for me, where this started was ultimately I I married an entrepreneur. I don't know that I would have ever been in business because I was so locked and loaded, right? I was a learned controller. 
I had everything in a box. I had everything spelled out perfectly. I was kind of do, following the rules. I was making sure that I was, you know, doing the, the narrative of what everybody says that you would do. And I happened to fall in love with someone who thought very differently. Mm. <laughs> so, so part of this mess and this beautiful story, I have to give my, my husband credit for because when we started dating, he was starting to poke around at real estate. He loved the idea of the financial freedom, but he was really diving into the mindset around what does it mean to be financially free and what does it look like? And so he asked me to get married. He quit his job and we jumped into real estate all in one year, which also happened to be 2008, which of course anyone in real estate knows that that's right, the wrong time, quote unquote, to be getting into real estate. But for us, we were too stupid, too naive to any of the things to know that actually we were hitting the market spot on because we decided to pick a niche, right? Which Mm. is what everybody tells you in real estate when you get started, pick a niche. So we picked short sales, truly hit home, hit a home run. I mean, your timing was perfect. Our timing couldn't have been perfect. And we didn't know that, you know, like we didn't under, we, we, even to your point, intellectually, we knew about market cycles. Intellectually, we understood the practicality of building a business. Intellectually, we knew all the scripts and said all the things. That got us to the point that we were managing 60, 70 short sale files. I mean, we were making more money in a month than most people make in a year, within year one. I mean, mm. our, our scale of success went really fast. Yeah. The interesting thing about that was that given two more years later, after the epic success, building a business, right, having a staff, doing all the things, we ended up $100,000 in debt living in my mom's basement. <laughs> that was not hot. Ask Travis. That was not hot. You know, like that was not, that was not successful. Um, for us, that was our big step into understanding that there is more to this game than just technique. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and by the way, if you can hear screams in the background for anyone listening, those are my children that Ben talks about. I have five under the age of nine. So I could live in a bunker and you would still hear noises. No, this is, you know, this is great. This is so (laughs) raw. I love it because, you know, Julia has been talking about possibly changing her last name to Brady because she's closer (laughs) to the Brady bunch than, than, than I am. (laughs) Ah, It's because I love you. Ben Brady, Julia, Uh, it just would make so much sense. Yeah. uh, So if you hear, if you hear noise in the background, I will not, I will publicly admit that I don't tell them to be quiet all the time because you can't, it won't work. Anyways, part of what this showed us, Ben, was that it's not just technique. Because we did all the techniques, yeah. right? We we did all the things. We followed all the scripts. We built the business. We and that was our first step into going. Oh, there's more to this than just technique. There has to be this thing called mindset, right? Yeah. Like, what did we not know? What did we not see? What did we not understand at a much deeper level? Even yeah. to the point of that person sitting across the table that you could tell them all day long, like, "Hey, money isn't going to make you successful," right? Or you and I have been on the other t- table, uh, other side of a table of agent after agent after agent that were like, "Hey, I, I, t- I told you to use that tool," like double click on the email, like yeah. Google how to be successful, you know, like here's all the things. And the problem is, is that we could literally Google how to do anything, how to build a better business in real estate, how to thrive in any market cycle, how to, how to, how to, and we would have pages and pages and pages of answers. And yet, statistically speaking, there's still not enough success happening in real estate. We see more people getting out of the business in quote unquote hard times, right? We see people who are struggling with anxiety and depression and overwhelm and suicide. And so at some level, we have to realize that skill set isn't enough. Yeah. Knowledge is not enough. Yeah. And that gap is what got me to where I am now is because I was fascinated by the gap of here's where I am yep. and here's where I want to be. And we try to top load that thing with behavior modification and systems and processes. And sure, that can get us some of the way, but for a lot of people, hardly anywhere, because what we don't understand is the power of that mindset. And that growth really has more to do with mindset first, skill set second. Yeah, it's so it's so valuable. Like, there's a th- so much out of that that your your conversation that I want to quickly unpack, and I don't want to I don't want to lose that train of thought because, guys, this is the this is the work that if you're listening to this is that Julia's got a podcast with Travis, her husband, um, that she has called Dream On. You'll see the sign in the background just behind her if you're watching. Dream On is a great podcast where they basically go through and talk about all types of day to day issues. Um, you know, one recently is that that I love the episode was about the comparison war that you have with, around others. You know, in comparison. Comparison is the theft of happiness. And if you ask me that, you know, um, you know, prior to doing the work with you, Julia, is that, you know, I would have been like, oh, what do you mean? That's how I measure myself about my success. You're kidding me, right? And it's just so unfulfilling. But then 
the the other part about this that I want to touch on quickly and not to talk about him while he's not here, Travis, um, just so that everybody knows the type of person that Travis is, is that Travis sitting in your mother's basement would have legitimately just sent him borderline over the edge. I could just... <laughs> Just imagine that. But also the unpacking that Travis would have done about what went wrong and how it went wrong. Travis is a three on the Enneagram, I believe, isn't he? Four, 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 four sorry. So four hyper hyper detailed in how things work and what's happening and wants to know absolutely everything. Travis is um, sometimes when you have a conversation with Travis, it's like having a conversation with a treadmill because he asks you questions like that you've never, ever thought about before and makes you think <laughs> completely laterally. And it's like you walk away from the conversation going, exhausted. <sighs> He starts oh. speeding it up too. He starts to like push the faster button. <laughs> but I want to, I want to make, I want to, Julia spoke to the Harcourts Network in Arizona in our conference last year. And one of the things that I learned about Travis instantaneously made me so much more nervous to be around him is that, so Julia and I, let's say, let's say that you and I are eights on the Enneagram and, and we'll talk about Enneagrams in one episode here, guys. We'll do an episode just on Enneagrams. So bear with us, look it up for yourself for now, if you're really curious, but um, I, if I go for a run, bam, Apple watch on or something on my phone that is measuring it, telling me how far I've gone, how like I've got something at the end of that run that I could show somebody. I went on a run. I love that you said that too. Like I'm going to show, I'm, I'm going to show Instagram. I'm going to story mode this boomerang the shit out of this. Yeah. Like I'm the type of person that's, what's the fucking point if I can't prove that I did it? You know? <laughs> to someone else does anyone want to know how good i am exactly so as you can tell we're still working through some stuff but uh um however the 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 the, the thing that julia said on stage that i didn't realize that made me stand away from travis was this guy goes on a run without setting a timer or knowing how long he's going for or whatever he's going to just run until he feels tired and then turn around and come back i'm like what type of serial killer is this guy oh it's my God. It's incredible. It's so good. It's so good. But I think that, and I we could even just do a podcast on that, but it's so good because it's so true. I mean, that man knows something that the rest of humanity doesn't know in that, <laughs> that there is pressure in the privilege, right? Where you and I are like looking for the metric oftentimes, or most people, right? Even if we're kind of just generalizing here, we all look for that level of success that then we can show someone else that we're successful. And Travis has no bar of anybody else in mind. It's his bar and he's fully focused on his bar and he knows when he surpassed it and when he's, you know, kind of played the like laissez-faire thing. Like the guy just has an internal fire that's mind boggling. Yeah, I, I just, you know, to be around Travis actually certainly allows you to feel a greater appreciation for like when somebody asks you a question, the genuine curiosity that comes out of that man is unbelievable now because you and I, you and I have both been in the game before from a sales perspective, and and are in the game is that asking a question just so that there's not an awkward moment of silence or that to <laughs> pretend like you care and all of those different things. He just doesn't have that. No, <laughs> I love that you're just airing your dirty laundry. It's so good. Oh, it's so. But like again, well, and, but here's the technique. I think you're right. In in sales, we the part the problem with the scripts, right? Again, all of the the skill set and the scripting and the processes are good until they're not, right? Yeah. And I think what's happening even in real estate is that we're, number one, we don't have a give a damn. Mm. And number two, we forget it along the way because we start chasing the dollar. So even our buying questions are so self-centered and so greedy that we actually don't care what the buyer or seller is saying. We care about getting to the answer so we can care about getting to the paycheck. And what happens is, sure, that could get me to a certain level, but it ain't going to take you to where you've never been, right? Well, you, and then it, it's yeah. not going to keep you going, right? Because it's not a sustainable or it's not a, a sustainable uh, motivation. Well, talking about one of the things that like getting to that, that sustainable motivation, and and I promise we'll get a little bit more structure coming up here shortly, but uh, but I guess that I guess that the thing that really hit home for me when I first started doing work with you, Julia, and we discussed this probably in our second or third session that you and I did together, and we'll talk about some of the things that you go through with people. I mentioned Julia's, I mentioned Julia's um, podcast, but make sure that I'll add a link in any of the show notes or anything that you guys are watching for her book as well, um, because that was one thing that going through the process with you and then actually going through and listening to your audio book, because I don't read so well, is that to really... Re, to reform 
the process that we went through to be more aware, more mindset driven, but also understanding this was the one thing that really hit for me that I keep coming back to. I have built a career from spite. I honestly have like my motivation and I can, I could list the name of five enemies that I had very early on in real estate. Um, a couple of them were my early business owners that didn't think, thought that I was too young and I had to prove them wrong. Then it was when I got into auctioneering, certain individuals threatening me because I was so much younger than them. Um, and you know, and, and my buddy Mitch, who's a very good friend of mine is a prime example of he's in a cycle at the moment where spite and resentment and all of those things are just purely pushing him and certainly with with me as well like proving people wrong but when i got to the certain element or certain point you know a couple of years ago now it just couldn't keep me going i had to try and pick another enemy and be pissed off at somebody else in order to keep going it just like and you said to me anger will get you out of bed in the morning or fear will get you out of bed in the morning but those emotions are not enough to keep you going totally and and i think the interesting thing about it is the irony in some of the things that we have to do in this growing process is also mind boggling, right? It, their mind blows. Why? Because I'm trying to actually get after my heart. I'm trying to go to a deeper level, right? And so oftentimes what gets us to where we are won't take us to where we've never been. But the weird part about the transition of letting go of some of these things from habits to mindsets to tools to all the things is that a lot of times they work. Right. So you and I, I remember a conversation that at some level, when we started to unpack a different way to approach life, love, business, the whole thing, it was kind of like, well, shit, this has made me be successful. Right. Mm. Like my, my spite, my anger, my fill in the blank for everybody has got me to where I am. It's protected me. It's compartmentalized the world. It's made me successful. Like oftentimes why I want to keep doing the things is because they worked until they don't. And when you really look at growth, growth is not no longer about just acquiring more skills or adding more things to the plate. Oftentimes it's an unlearning process and it's a deepening process. It's mm. not adding more. It's actually being willing to let go of the things that don't serve us anymore, won't take us to where we've never been, right? And and that's that's part of the juxtaposition of the whole thing. Yeah. And and I think that I think that the other the the, the part of this work that I think that hopefully some people are listening at the moment, hopefully anyone's listening, maybe it's just you and I having a conversation. <laughs> it's fine. I love it all day. I will be here all day with you. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so the, so at this point, you know, talking about certain things around fear or anger or all of these things, not being able to be sustainable motivators to keep you moving forward and all of that type of stuff is that. I have to be honest, when you first told me that, I'm like, fuck you. Like, well, how do I change that? Like, like, okay, that's great. Like drop that bomb. Are you like a TV series that's like going to end at that point to keep me coming back for season two? Or, you know, like, how do I do this? And that's, and this, this level of frustration guys that, that I have to admit is that I walked around for six months, relatively pissed off. Like I was like, and then you sprinkle on top of that, you know, like, like, and we can go through the stages, Julia, of, of like being um, unconsciously incompetent and then leading into consciously incompetent. That was my deepest and biggest challenge of also now that I go back into an unhealthy state that I'm consciously aware that I'm being an idiot, you know, like, or <laughs> I'm, I'm really not in the right frame of mind, or I responded to that when I know I needed to take a break or take a breather or, you know, take a deep breath and say that I'm free and all of these different things, you know, that that is really it was troublesome for me and i still have trouble with that on a daily basis of being consciously incompetent mm -hmm. and the view of trying to get to consciously competent and then unconsciously competent is the end result and hopefully that becomes this pattern recognition that happens eventually but the real trouble that i had was that frustration but then you sprinkle on top of that Callista started to do the work and because of her emotional intelligence that i believe now she won't wouldn't admit that and hopefully she's not listening to this because she doesn't want to be mentioned and all of that type of stuff but <laughs> but i guess that you know, the, the reality was, is that she picked it up, bam, 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 because she is the most intelligent person that are in the room, if you're in a room with her. And second to that is that her emotional intelligence and ability to absorb and all of those different traits that she had, I'm going, well, hang on a second. I've been doing this for six, seven, eight months longer than you. And I haven't made hardly any of the progress that you've made. And that measuring stick really bothered me. So do you have, what would you say, Julia, from the work that people go through and the frustration that they go through, I, I can say it's worth it, but it's like one of those things that if you haven't experienced it, it's like, oh, really? They don't believe you. Well, and it's so funny. I'm glad that you're saying this because 
even the title of my book, Dream I Dare You, right? So often people will have, they already, A, have a preconceived notion around dreaming, right? Like that many people actually have had more disappointments or loss or pain around the topic, right? I had a dream and I lost it, right? I had it of, I've lost someone that I love or, right? So there's a lot around that. And then there's also the negative connotation around this idea that like, it's just pie in the sky, like get practical, get realistic, the whole thing. However, though I stand before you today, honestly saying that I literally have the dreams that I dreamt of years and years and years ago. The reason I wrote the book wasn't because I'm like, everybody should be doing this and everybody should be living the dream. And this is awesome. I wrote this book because it's really fucking hard. Mm. Like the process is really hard. And so the book is actually written in a process to get freedom. So people buy the book thinking they're going to get their dreams, but what we actually sold them is a ticket to freedom. Yeah, that's right? right. But what we have to realize and and for you and anybody in these moments is that these moments, Callista has them too, even good old Travis Gentry has them too. Like, you know, you and I are a little bit messier. We're we're like the elephant that walks into the room and breaks everything, whereas <laughs> Callista and Travis are very articulate and so, right, they're breaking internally. You and I are just breaking the room. <laughs> The idea here for all of us is that it's one thing to get free, it's another to stay free. And so I think that the process number one of this book is designed to help you open up awarenesses and and point to the things of why we do what we do, why we're continuing to be stuck, why we keep reverting back to the patterns. Like there's a lot of opening up of these cans of worms that we have to recognize that's hard. But then once we actually learn it at a head level, We have to keep practicing it at a heart level and every moment, therefore, is an opportunity to practice our freedom, right? And so sometimes what happens is that mindset around like, oh crap, I'm not learning this stuff or I'm still responding the way that I always did or I I keep doing the things that I would. No, actually the moment is just asking you, what do you believe, Mm. right? What path are you going to take? Like, and we forget that we've had years, like you have had years and years and years and years of practice of picking up your shield of anger. We'll just use that as an example, right? Yeah, yeah. Anger is a secondary emotion. So people who experience anger, what we have to realize is that actually it, it feels unconsciously like a way to protect ourselves, right? Mm. It gives us power. It gives us control. It helps the rest of the room, like listen to what we want to say. But what we don't realize is the secondary emotion, meaning I skipped the first because it's too vulnerable. It's it's disappointment. It's sadness. It's lonely, right? It's an emotion that feels so vulnerable that it's just easier to do what we've always done. Yeah. So I think to your point of that, co- that conscious competency ladder, as we grow, we have to realize that we're dealing with two things, right? Which is the power of you and my work of like this growth, then skill set, because it's a consciousness or awareness, right? And it's a competency, which is a skill set, right? So the, com- the, the consciousness and the awareness is basically my ability to actually realize that my behavior, my actions, my results are all a byproduct. Mm. They're not a, they're not a starting point. They're an end point, right? So I have to actually be really aware of what I'm thinking, of what I'm believing, of what I'm making this moment say about me, about people, right? We unpack this as a huge topic, but these limiting beliefs, right? That I'm actually I have this unconscious narrative in my head that's not even necessarily true, it just feels true. And I have to be willing to heighten my level of awareness to the thing under the thing, conversations that aren't being had, thought processes that I didn't know I had. And then I'm able to actually grab a skill set, a tool, right? A competency around, all right, what am I going to do with this now? Right? But oftentimes we're just, again, reverting to the behavior, right? A technique as opposed to slowing down, creating some margin, understanding the thing under the thing so we can address the situation. Speaking of thing under the thing then, there's the, a part of the process of work. And again, we'll dive deeper into all of this stuff, guys, just giving you an insight today. But the limiting, limitless vision and limiting belief was the work that you and I did for probably the first, you know, probably six weeks, maybe longer. It was about yeah. two months. And, and, you know, the principle of understanding the negative thought pattern that you have been through your entire life and all of it stemming from when you're a child, not to get too deep, um, but but it all stems from some individual moments and some work that you do with people, you know, to get them to realize that we did this with our entire um, corporate team. And, you know, the the I learned more about them with inside 30 minutes of doing that exercise than I'd ever, ever, ever understood. And then the other part was also like hearing it from them and then knowing who they are. It's like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. I totally get you now. Yeah. 
It's, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, I think what we don't realize is, number one, all of us have our own internal limiting beliefs that we didn't know we had. Number two, now we're engaging with other humans, trying to do business, trying to do marriage, trying to do life, not realizing that every single one of these people has a limiting belief with a ton of proof that this thing is true, right? Like all of us have a story and a history and daddy issues and all the things, you know, that could go, see, I told you, see, I told you, see, I told you. And here we are trying to do life, business, marriage together, wondering why it's not working, right? Or why it's good, but not great. And I think it's when you start to peel back these layers and do the hard work, right? Like take a few steps back to actually like be set free it's not until you actually start that that you you see the revelation of how powerful it actually is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that you know the resonation that, that I got from all the work that we're doing, and and again, not to dive too deeply into it, but the the reality was is that my my all of my stuff revolved around freedom mm-hmm. and being complete is was sort of where we got to. And it may be maybe one of the reasons that I've resonated with your work as much as I have. But I think that hopefully anybody that listens to this freedom is so important, whether that be financially, whether that be mentally, whether that be in so many different ways is that, mm-hmm. you know, we go through life creating these problems that that don't create us to be free, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, and it's just an ongoing, yeah, ongoing compa- compounding effect that then you turn around one day and go, there's no chance that I'm going to break the shackles of freedom. It's not yeah. true. It's yeah. not true. You know, well, you, and, yeah. and in your defense, right. And maybe we can say, right. Cause I'd l- I would love to actually hear from your perspective, right. That, that phone call to me to say like, all right, I need to engage here because I remember on a call, you had said something along the lines of like, I'm aware enough now to know that I'm stuck, but I'm not aware enough to know how to get unstuck. Yeah. Right. Which speaks to that person, right? That is, especially in this industry, like, can you, I want to hear from you, like what, what was that moment for you? Because again, on paper, you're successful, you're doing all the things, you're Ben Brady, right? Like all of those things. Mm. So what, what was your core reason for making that phone call? That's a good question. Um, I think that my core reason for doing it, and again, Julia knows that I have to talk through things to get the answer. So I'm, this might not be true in the beginning. And as I'm talking about it, it might come to me, <laughs> yes. might come to me. Look at how good you did that. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Ben Brady right now. Mo- most of the time. So one thing that we work on guys is that someone will ask me a question and I'll just start talking. And by the time that I'm talking and I'll add all these fancy different words in and I'll, da, 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 I'm thinking about the answer and I'm like, oh, all right, now I'll go. Okay. <laughs> or even better, if you're married or in relationship to people like Ben and I are, Calista and Travis, here's how they function. We're going to do, this is like a side note, no extra charge here. So we, we are in relationship. This is, this is hard to be me and Ben because we're in relationship with people that whenever their mouth is open, whatever comes out of their mouth is principled. And it's true because they have internally thought for hours, days. So we get the, we get the cliff notes, shortest sentences of truth from the people that we're in a relationship with. Here's why it's hard for Ben and I, because what comes out of Ben and my mouth <laughs> is not necessarily true until it is because we're verbal processors. And it was brilliant for both Callista and Travis to know that, hey, what I'm about to say right now is not true. So (laughs) hold on just a second. (laughs) Let me get this out of my mouth. And then I'll actually go, okay, that's true. Not true. Change my mind there. No, totally not true. <laughs> it's, 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 the, it's why I convinced myself that my ability to recover a situation was a great skill set when I didn't have to have that skill set if I actually thought about what I was going to say in the first case. <laughs> it's so good. Unbelievable. But uh, I guess that to answer the question of why I made the phone call, I think that it was at a point where I felt stuck, Julia. Like I, I actually felt like, like I wasn't, progressing and for me that's literally if i'm not progressing i'm i'm dying you know in in that sense and I, the 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 unknowing skill set of of well, sorry the un unknowing of not knowing how to get myself unstuck as you put it was youtube videos and and all this stuff there's just such a vast expanse of 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 people out there giving you advice and i'm really conscious like i am a TikTok just fiend and <laughs> and we're still and, working on that habit I'm yeah, really trying <laughs> yeah yeah but the thing that the thing that I can identify with now having a theory in myself whilst people don't believe that they're harming anybody by the advice they give them most of the time I'll say most of the time because I still believe that there's a 10% barrier there that people just create shit to say shit and <laughs> 
Um, but um, but I guess that I guess that um, I guess that the the one thing that that I got real, I like now, like it detests me to listen to some of the advice that's out there. And I was lucky enough to realize that going down the path of YouTube and trying to like, actually even thinking about the phrase to put in YouTube or to put in Google or to try and, cause I'm self-taught in many, 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 many of the things that I do. Like I had to teach myself how to do emails, like and spell and all of that type of stuff, even though some would say I can't. So I wanted to teach myself because I didn't want to be vulnerable with an individual person. I really didn't like I can be vulnerable with Callista and Callista knew that I needed something, but she didn't have the skill set either to help and all of that stuff. But the, the, the part was that I just, I was so lucky that early on, like I was listening to something going, this is a crock of shit. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just not right. Like, mm -hmm. like, and again, that's my opinion of that, but I could identify with that. So I think that the, the one trigger, I, I I really do believe the one trigger was when we had you. So it, this relationship started off with one of our best officers in Harcourts, North America, actually got us involved. The Ghana girls um, got us involved with um, with Julia. Julia spoke to the network um, and you did a great job. And I love the message because you went through, you know, and we'll get you to go through the limiting beliefs and all of that stuff, the, the um, uh, Mas Maslow's. Maslow's hierarchy and all of that stuff. And, um, and it resonated, but then I really do think that being the egotistical individual that I am and, and certainly was Stop more on that scale, that. Stop <laughs> saying that. but, but I guess that the, the, at that time, the growth coach thing helped me make that decision and actually reach out. I'll, I'll be honest, because if it was life coach or it was whatever other title that you would use, I definitely wouldn't have. I yeah. really resonated with the growth coach and, and coming to you, it allowed me to go, Hey, I really want to grow. And, and it certainly allowed me to hide behind that bravado of growth. Yeah, but I, I disagree I because I actually remember this first phone call talking with you. And again, I knew, right, the, the, the Ben Brady, right? So in my mind, I'm like, what the heck is this guy calling me for, of all right. things, right? So if we're also kind of opening up our own can, I'm like, what? Well, I don't know how I could possibly help this guy. You get on the phone and you, you actually went straight for all of the things. And then right. you said... I know that I know that I know that I will not get unstuck and I will not get out of my ego and my own way. And I'm bulldozing people. I mean, you went, and I honestly like almost like pulled the phone away. Cause I remember going, if this guy knows already all of these things about himself, then he's actually ready to learn. Yeah. I think I, I, I was hyper aware. I definitely you were, was hyper, you were aware. hyper aware. You were hyper aware of all of your things. I also was like, he's also an eight on the Enneagram. Like you're naming me on a bad day. Like <laughs> all the things that you're saying, right. That I aspire not to be. So I think that even to your point of, right. Like we're motivated by two things as people, pain or pleasure, right? Mm. Like we either are so connected to this pain hurts bad enough. I give enough about it. My give a damn is, 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 so annoyed with this enough that I'm going to make a change yep. or I actually have a picture of the potential possibility, vision, dream, you name it. Like that's either so motivating to me. One of those things has to be so motivating to me that I'll make a change. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I, th I think again, that's, that's what, if I recall, that's, that's where I saw you. Yeah. I, I, I think that I'd gotten myself into a position. I heard this, like, like a, something when I was searching for all of this is that doing a daily audit on the way that you behaved and all of these different things. And the daily audit was certainly something that was playing on my mind for at least six months before, you know, we connected. Um, and, you know, I'd lose sleep over it, like going, well, oh, I literally just blasted that person in the situation. The other thing also when managing a team, like my skill set, like people talk about this all the time, you know, founders of companies, uh, you typically horrible managers and horrible, all of those things, because like I was a real estate agent. I, like I'm, I was real estate. I, I did the auction side of the business, you know, and I did all the great levels, but the reality was managing people. I thought I could do it because I, I thought I, I thought I could do it, but it was just a different thing. And my ability to enable others mm -hmm. to rely on me and keep control of situations was just, and it's ongoing guys. It is ongoing. It is a stifling characteristic that will stifle any growth or anybody around you's growth. It, mm -hmm. it, it uh, and it also, also opens up, opens up another category to this as well of that, the mentors or the people that you'd thought were doing wonderful work in the world and looking at how they've sort of done things, you certainly can see that there's a level of success that they can get to, but you know why that person's stuck by, totally. by watching as well. By watching them. Right. And I'm not, we were actually at a dare to dream conference this last weekend and this guy comes up who's been struggling with anxiety. I mean, massive anxiety, right? We get to his limiting belief with, which is all around. I don't trust people. I don't trust myself, the whole thing. And I said to him, do you even know what anxiety means? Like, have you looked this up? And he goes, 
well, my therapist has kind of said something. I go, your therapist? He goes, yeah, I've been seeing a therapist for six months. I said, and you've been struggling with anxiety at this level for six months with your therapist? He says, yes. I said, did you know that anxiety actually means I don't trust the process and flow of life, which is your limiting belief? He was like, literally tears start rolling down his cheeks. I was like, two things. I gave him a whole routine to actually address that that night. And I said, fire your therapist. I kid you not. (laughs) I kid you not. He comes back the next day. The first time in six months, he followed every routine. He went back throughout his entire life timeline, looked at all of the areas that reinforce this limiting belief. He did some practices that I told him to. He walked in the next morning and I'm praying like, oh dear God, please let him have slept good. Like, <laughs> and he looks at me and with tears again in his eyes, he goes, I have never slept so good in my life. Uh, that's good. And I think so that, good. And so I this think- is not this is not a suggestion to fire a therapist, but maybe, right? Like at some <laughs> level, like if we're not getting to the thing under the thing, yeah. right? Like that's the power of even your, like you were just at that level, like any one of us, a self-fulfilling prophecy right? That, so you kept, again, an ecosystem around you that need, everybody needed to depend on you yep, and yep. you needed to control other things, which only verified this self, self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's what we do because as people, we have a need to be right. Yeah. And ultimately we have to ask ourselves, do I want to be right or do I want to be free? Yeah. Because generally you don't get to be both. Yeah. Well, I don't know a better way to end today's podcast than certainly rounding it out with some, you know, absolute pearls of wisdom from Julia. Now, guys, as I said, the Julia is going to become our growth coach for Rethink Real Estate and on our podcast. I'll make sure that I link her book um, if anybody wants to dive into the work deeper before, you know, doing anything else. Uh, TheJuliaGentry.com is available to you as well. Uh, then also um, the podcast. Uh, I think that, you know, going, you riffing with Travis and back and forward and talking about different things is certainly, you know, unquestionable value there as well. So um, we'll make sure that we link to that as well. But Julia, thank you for your time today and looking forward to having you as a frequent guest with the Real Est- Rethink Real Estate team. Dream on, baby. Dream on. I <laughs> love it. So about 75% of our audience hasn't liked, followed, or subscribed to our podcast. It would mean the world to us and it would help this podcast more than you know to expand our reach if you were to like, follow, or subscribe on any of the platforms that you're watching or listening on. Thanks again.